Hey there, my garden gurus. The sun is out, the wind is blowing, and the birds are singing. The perfect opportunity to transplant some tomatoes. Come plant with me. So what we're going to be doing today is, this is our specimen that we're dealing with. This is actually a tomato plant that was donated to me from uh, one of our local high schools. Uh, it's the end of the school year, school is out, and uh, some of the kids in the science class, and biology specifically, uh, left the plants they had been growing. Um, so uh, the teacher was cleaning out the classroom and she donated this tomato plant over to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, transplant this into our main garden here trim back some of the uh, some of the damaged branches and see if we can't get this to thrive because right now we currently don't have any flowering going on in this plant whatsoever and reason behind it it looks like it is lacking uh, lacking maybe a little bit of phosphorus and a little bit of nitrogen so what we're going to do is we're going to get this into our main box here uh, we're going to trim back the roots a little bit and then give it a healthy dose of uh, fish fertilizer and a little bit of rooting uh, stimulator so that we can see if we can uh, get this to start producing like everything else in our garden. And just like I stated in previous videos, um, when I am planting my tomatoes or transplanting in this situation, I like to also plant them with basil as well. So you can see here, that this is a water propagated basil. I got a nice healthy root system going on here. So this guy is definitely going to get uh, transplanted along with this tomato as well. And the patch of soil that we're gonna place this in is already heavily populated with basil and our bell pepper plants here as well. Uh, these are three plants that love being together, so I want to take this opportunity to uh, continue on with that uh, that uh, companion planting. All right, now the first thing I'm going to do here is we're actually just going to be uh, cutting down into our garden fabric, fabric, our gardening fabric that we have here. Pull back our mulch already. This is going to be our spot where we're going to be uh, placing a newly acquired tomato plant. I do love being out in my garden. And I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're a person that has a strong affinity for nature as well. I like being in your garden as well. So, there we are. We can pull back and we can see that soil there. Now, I also do have my soaker holes down in here. And you can see, look at that. Look at that. It's just rich. Rich with life. Rich with nutrients down up in there from all the composting that uh, we do over here at Urban Garden with Gray. So what we're going to do is, uh, <laughs> as my buddy uh, Gen X Gardener says, uh, if you ain't getting dirty, you ain't doing it right. <laughs> if you haven't heard of his channel yet, definitely go check out Gen X Gardener. Uh, he has a great personality and a great wealth of knowledge when it comes to gardening. Uh, and plus, he's part of the Urban Gardening with Gray family. Uh, we're going to just uh, put our hands down in that soil. I don't need a shovel. Do you? I don't mind uh, getting a little uh, dirt up under the nails there. Now that we've moved back some of that soil, I'm going to get nice and deep down in there. Now in this spot of my garden, the reason why this spot is vacant is we did have onions at one point in time here. Uh, but I have since uh, harvested and uh, used those onions while cooking dinner. Oh, we have another tomato, another trio to add to the group as well. These are some uh, seeds that I sowed a couple of months ago. Um, I think these guys are ready to go ahead and get transplanted as well. So we'll try to plant those too. All right. Seems as though this young lady is now ready to be transplanted into the soil. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to 
push down from the bottom. This is that sweet spot, man. But you can see you're actually kind of see some roots down there already. That means, yeah, we're almost close to being root bound with this pot. Time to get this bad boy in a get her in a bigger home. Let's see. All right, yeah. See, let's look at that root system there. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to break this up a little bit before I put this down into our spot. So I'm going to just take and break up the soil a little bit. Yes, I know I'm disturbing the roots, but it's okay, girl. Don't worry. Gray is going to take good care of you. We're going to get you in a new home. I'm going to get you fed. Once we get her fed and we take care of her, she's going to bear fruit for us. That's the beautiful thing about planting, about herbs and gardening, vegetables, fruit. You take care of them. You take care of their soil. Take care of their home. They will provide you their bounty. Let's see. Now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to trim these roots back here because she's got a good system going, but I want to stimulate them to reach out a little bit more. My little uh, secret sauce, so to speak. I need to put my rooting powder down in there first. Now we already have a root system going, so rooting powder is not necessary, but I like adding the rooting powder down in there because it eases with the plant shock. That transplant shock. There we are. Sprinkle just a little bit. And now we can place our new tomato down in our new home. All right. I'm just going to stand you up. Come on, you got it, girl. Get those roots down in there. We're going to apply just a little bit of pressure. There we are. It's okay. Don't worry. Daddy's got you here. All right. Now, that we got her in her new home. And we'll push down. Get those air pockets out of there. Let's get some of this soil back in our hole. Pack her down pretty good. Now, we don't want to compact the soil. That's why uh, the soil is heavily mulched here in this location. Uh, because when you compact it, uh, that makes it hard for the plant to be able to breathe. And the roots do need to be able to breathe. They are not uh, anaerobic. Roots do actually need to be able to breathe as well. Now, that we've got her in her new home, we're, of course, going to uh, push back our mulch back to this spot, cover all this up to keep the bugs away, and then we're going to get this, uh, uh, this uh, tomato plant we're going to get this tomato plant uh, again staked with our invisible trellis. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a moment. Although, before we do, though, let's take this opportunity while we're here digging in the soil, digging in the dirt. Let's get this water transplanted basil, water propagated basil, off into our soil, too. I want to put this basil close by. Uh, to take the benefits from companion planting to full consideration. So what I'm gonna do is actually just get us a nice little hole going here. Since the plant is so young, we don't have to really dig that deep. <sighs> Got our soaker hoses right there. Take and pull back some soil. All right, there we go. Now I just wanna take this propagation and get it right next to a basil plant, uh, our tomato plant. All right, here we are. Oh, knocked over my water bottle. There we are. Here we go. Just like before, I'm going to take a little bit of a rooting hormone. Just to ease with that shock. Um, drizzle a little bit on the roots here. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. There we are. Boom. As I like to say in French, très de bon. Now I'm going to place her down in here in our new hole. And put some of that soil back in here. 
this basil plant is going to love being by its big sister or love being by this uh, tomato plant. Now we just put our mulch back here and there we are. Now we have a basil here. Then we also, I don't know if you guys can see it in this shot, probably not. Let's see, we have another basil plant. <laughs> Got a little bit of a jungle going on here, huh? Got a basil plant going right here too. Now I planted this basil a couple of weeks ago. Look at how big it's going, how big it is. It's already flowering too. Now there's a rumor going around that when the basil is uh, flowering and bolting, like it, uh, that plant that I just showed you was, that you shouldn't uh, propagate from it. I do it all the time. Now, I read the article a friend of mine sent me about it. Like somebody firing a weapon off in the distance. I'm kind of, uh, kind of clumsy with living out in the country. But uh, I read the article that my friend was sending me uh, about not uh, propagating basil when it's bolting. Uh, because he's been having some trouble with water propagations and you know i'm not disputing the article I mean, you had a very good point on why you shouldn't but it's always worked for me i have propagated from one single sweet basil plant um maybe 30 times now and it doesn't matter if it's flowering or not now i've been propagating more during the uh during the spring and summer months here. Uh, it actually propagates a lot easier in those months because of the season. Um, but uh, my basil plants have been flourishing. The reason why I propagate so much basil is because it's so beneficial for a lot of my crops, not just the peppers and the tomatoes. It's actually good for uh, a lot of your plants. The reason being is because of the, the uh, pest control issue. It really does push back, for instance, like with your tomatoes and those her horn worms. <laughs> the horn worms uh, really love your tomatoes. And uh, by putting the basil right next to uh, our tomato plants like I have been doing, uh, you end up not... Uh, the horn worms, I haven't had a problem out of them whatsoever. There's a couple of Facebook groups I follow, uh, as well as on Instagram, and a lot of people have been posting... Uh, Specifically in my zone, zone eight, zone seven, um, they've been posting a lot of pictures of hornworms. Um, I haven't seen one this season. Now, you could say that I'm lucky, or you could say that it has something to do with all the basil that I have planted around. Um, who's to you know? But uh, I've been planting basil like crazy around all my tomatoes, and while I'm sitting here running them up. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this tomato in the ground, right? We got to get these guys separated first, though. Now, what I'm going to do here with these tomatoes to separate them, as you can see, we got a, a lot of roots going on here. I'm just going to kind of um, plant them in a sandy loam. I'm just going to slowly apply a little bit of pressure just to kind of uh, break up this uh, soil formation. And of course, I'm going to reuse this soil again. Let's see. There we are. And I tell you guys, this is why I love gardening. I love being able to cultivate life. I don't know if it's the scientist in me, if it's the, the dad in me. I don't know what it is. But uh, it's just something about having this life and holding this life in your hands and knowing that you had a a hand, a literal hand in, uh, in cultivating this life. It's rewarding. There we are. And we're just slowly easing these roots loose. There we are. Boom, come on. Come on, baby, give me what we want. There we are. Looks like, oh, there's actually four plants here. <laughs> I didn't even know it was four. Add a little seedling right next to it. There we are. That's one. There we go. And uh, there's all do oh. 
Oh, there she is. Hua. And Ga. There we are. So we've got our four babies all picked apart. And now we can take these babies and go ahead and get them down in the soil so that they can start to thrive as well. And rinse and repeat. Now, much like in the wild, we're going to look through our seedlings and find our healthiest because it is a little bit of a survival of the fittest. And we got a good root structure there. And we got some good leaves going on. And we have those, those fine little needles there. This nightshade here is going to be our, our, uh, the one we plant in our soil. Let's break that soil up and get those roots loose. There we are. I'm gonna get her down in there. I'm not gonna trim this time. I should just place these roots right down in the soil. Give us some more of that loam that we used before. It's a uh, native soil, so to speak, soil it's familiar with. I'm gonna place a little bit of pressure, and then boom! Look at that. Look at how life does, right? Ah, there we are. You know, a lot of times as human beings, that's what we are, right? We try to claim dominion over nature. But the older that I get, the more I'm starting to realize we're, we're not, uh, we don't have dominion over nature. Huh. All of what's going on right now with the, with the climate change, and yes, climate change is real, uh, is showing us we don't have dominion over it earth we're subject uh, we're subjugated by it and that's why i grow all right gang now what i'm doing right here is i got our new tomato plants in the ground but i want to add a uh, a means of being able a means for the plant to be able to uh to stand up now there's methods of being able to do this known as staking. And of course, there's a plethora of different um, staking options that you can buy from your big box stores uh, that will help your tomato stand up. But this new method that I've been trying this year, I'm actually quite pleased with, is by creating a uh, invisible trellis. And I'm doing this by using fishing line. Now, my logic, now, full disclosure, I did see this on the internet. It's not 100% my idea. I, will give, I would give credit, but I can't remember exactly where I saw it. But I thought this was a novel idea. Because if you think about it, your fishing line is um, a, it, it's used to being able to hold pressure. Uh, for instance, when you're trying to pull a fish up out of the water. So if it can hold the weight of a fish, it should be able to hold the weight of a plant. Specifically in this situation, we're holding up our tomatoes. Now I have also used it to hold up my uh, to hold up my sunflowers as well. And I think this, aesthetically speaking, makes for a much better trellis system or staking system. Reason being is because this system. I just realized you are probably staring at my shorts the whole entire time I am uh, I'm doing this, but uh, bear with me, gang. I might. <sighs> All right. And what I'm doing is just tying this off here. But it makes, aesthetically speaking, a much better system because you don't have all these stakes sticking up in your garden. You uh, essentially just have the plants looking as though they are suspended in air standing up that's why i like this method all right all right and what i do is i take a line and i run it from either end of uh this converted pergola we like to recycle here at urban garden with gray we weren't using this pergola anymore so i use it to create my garden my garden so what i do is i one run one line from side to side parallel with my row while it's being parallel with my row i then then 
run what is kind of like a trout line off of each for each plant. So now that I have this line here, what I'm going to do is take this fishing line and then create a small bowline knot around the main stem of the plant. There we are. Got a cut there. And I'm going to create a bowline knot off of the main stem of the plant. Now, this tomato has uh, one main stem, but unfortunately, the main stem is uh, a little damaged. So, I'm going to be trimming some of that back. And when you create this bowline, uh, knot that you're placing. And when I say bowline, I'm just talking about a, a typical shoestring line. It's not anything too complex. Uh, you know, I, I was a uh, a Weeblow Scout back in the, in the day. I never went full Boy Scout, but I was a Weeblow Scout. We're not going to do any real complex knots. Like I said, it's just this bowline. What you want to do is leave a little bit of a loop so that you're not uh, cinching it down on your stem because you don't want to Create something too tight where it essentially could damage the plant once it gets bigger. The crows are talking to me. There we are. It would be great if I had a close up shot here, but this is where we're at. We've tied our bowline knot. Maybe I'll do a video specifically about this kind of trellis in the future. And again, like I said, we're not putting it ridiculously tight on there because we want to give the stem room to grow. And then we're going to take our plant. Oh, look at that. See, this is where I was talking about the damage off that main stem. Now, if we can cut that damaged part out and see if maybe we can propagate that into some soil. And now we're going to take that main stem we're simply just going to take the fishing line and kind of ever so gently move it around the plant. See, just kind of shimmy around there. And this gives the plant something that will help it stand up and create oxygen and airflow through the plant. Because when you get a really big, bushy, tomato plant, um, you, you, you kind of stifle its ability to be able to breathe. Plus, for its, uh, its fruit to be able to ripen and uh, get kissed by the sun, so to speak. So by doing the staking method, you open up that airway so it can breathe. And when she can breathe, she will bear fruit. There we are. Boom. And now we do have some of these offshoots here, and what I'll probably go and do is add an additional um, fishing line to these off branches here. But a lot of these are going to get trimmed back just because uh, they're so dilapidated and uh, lackadaisical. All right, there we have it. We have our transplanted tomato plant on our invisible trellis here. And then right next to it, we have our a basil start transplanted from water and then our young tomato plant that we've added to the garden now i also want to see if right next to this tomato plant here if i can do maybe one more basil and then move over and put another green pepper here as well i got some seeds that i placed in the in my seed starts we'll see if we can get them to thrive as well just to show you what i was talking about about the invisible trellising as you can see right here, this uh, sunflower, the sunflower is about five feet tall. Well, no, not five feet, maybe four feet tall here. But look at this giant. Look at this giant. This is taller than I am. This is one of my aricaras. The aricara is completely standing up. And it's funny because it's almost to the top of my trout line here. Look at that. But this makes for a much better system because when you stand back, Look at that. You don't have all these stakes 
in the middle of your garden. You actually have your plants. And you can see more of your plants this way. Like I said before, it also adds for uh, great ventilation going through your plants and so they can actually thrive and your pollinators can get in there as well. Because look, all of these, these flowers that are coming up in our spoon tomato here. Now, if you don't know about spoon tomatoes, spoon tomatoes, I'm going to be honest with you, I got these from Baker Creek and I love these little guys. You're going to check these out. Boom. They're so small. And these are going to be great in a salad because you don't have to cut them up. Once these ripen, just place them right there in your salad. Boom. No cutting involved. But now that we have this air, your pollinators can get in there and they can get to those flowers so that you can actually start producing fruit. And then over here are red robins. Got our red robins doing well as well. And this is all based off of this invisible trellis that I created here by using a fishing line. I gotta put my hand behind it so you can actually see it. Hey, and in case you're wondering, don't worry. I didn't forget about our other three guys we got here. These are actually just going to go right here in that leftover soil from our main tomato plant that we just planted. I'm going to place these down in here. We'll see how they do. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Um, I hope you find um, the information that I've shared with you helpful. Um, uh, that uh, invisible trellis, honestly, I feel like it's kind of a game changer. At least it was for me when I discovered it. So hopefully sharing it with you um, will uh, help you out in your garden. So again, thank you so much for hanging out with me here at Urban Garden with Bray. Uh, it's truly been a joy uh, to uh, have your company. Um, but above all, remember, enjoy life, enjoy family, and of course, enjoy your garden. Thanks for watching, gang.